We're losing an engine. NTSB investigator Alan Deal has discovered something crucial on the CVR. It's flamed out. What? Less than eight minutes before the DC-8 crashes into a Portland suburb, the captain seems unconvinced that low fuel is behind his engine failure. He was asking what was causing that, and he got a, a very adamant answer saying, fuel. Fuel. As if to say, we've been trying to tell you about this all along. Hoping those crossfeeds there or something. There are crossfeed valves that are opened in a specific sequence to let one tank feed one or more engines. And it's the job of the flight engineer, in the case of a DC-8, to know exactly how to do that. Showing fumes. Though the crew couldn't agree on exactly how much was left. Oh, showing a thousand or better. I don't think it's in there. One thing is certain. There isn't enough to keep the engines running. Losing an engine. It's flamed out. It takes a few things for, to make an engine run. One of them is fuel. You got that crossfeed open? Captain McBroom is desperate. He needs to get more fuel to the remaining engines. No, I haven't got it open. Which one? I'll open them both. Damn it, get some fuel in there. Each of the plane's four engines has its own fuel tank. Opening the crossfeed should allow fuel to flow between the four main tanks. Number two is empty. But it's not working. You're going to lose number three in a minute, too. One by one, fuel starvation shuts down all the engines, leaving the DC-8 without any power. OK, declare a mayday. The engines didn't have any fuel. We knew that the aircraft ran out of fuel. So then became the question, why? Why would a modern transport aircraft like this run out of fuel? Investigators focus on two possibilities, mechanical failure or human error. Was it a crew problem or was it an aircraft problem? December 28, 1978. We're losing an engine. United Airlines Flight 173 is less than 22 miles from Portland International Airport. The plane's engines are flaming out one after another. With two engines gone, the autopilot can no longer fly the plane. McBroom must get the crippled DC-8 to the airport himself. The engineer struggles to keep the last two engines running. We just lost one and two. Flight 173 has now lost all four engines. With no engines running, backup batteries now provide power to only critical instruments. The 100-ton aircraft is losing more than 3,000 feet of altitude a minute. At this rate, they will be lucky to stay airborne for as long as 90 seconds. Now, Captain McBroom makes a horrifying calculation. I can't make it. The airport is too far away. OK, declare a mayday. Portland Tower, United 173, heavy mayday. He declared mayday, and then in a very, what seemed to me like a, a calm, matter-of-fact voice, I could hear the pilot. The engines are flaming out. We're going down. We're not going to be able to make it to the airport. We lost power. We're going down. Emergency services are told what's happening. Flight 173 is flamed out. They're going down. The DC-8 is coming down over a densely populated suburb. Suddenly, Captain McBroom sees what he's been looking for. A dark area up ahead. It looks like an empty field. The place that you want to put it is where there, there's minimum buildings, uh, the most open area possible, because the 200,000 pounds plus jet arriving at 140 knots, which is 160 plus miles an hour, it's going to do a lot of damage to the things on the ground. Putting the plane on this narrow strip of land is McBroom's best bet. But as he gets closer, 
he realizes it isn't an open field. We can't make it. It's a heavily wooded suburb, and he's headed straight for it. If they're woods and that's all you have, then you're gonna have to deal with it. The tops of trees are pretty soft. As you settle into the trees, they get progressively less soft. They're gonna do a lot of damage. McBroom doesn't give up. He actually tries to steer the plane between the trees. The passengers still assume that they're about to touch down on a runway. We clipped the top of a few trees and that felt like we were making the initial landing at the airport. So my first sense was, you know, hooray, we're there. And then all hell broke loose. I saw the bright flash out there and, uh, and knew he had gone down. The plane carves a 1,600-foot-long path through the trees. Incredibly, the DC-8 has crash-landed in the middle of a major American city without injuring a single person on the ground. Most of the 189 passengers and crew are alive, including Captain Albert McBroom. 